Uh, do you enjoy uh, the work of, of, of getting out into the uh, ends of the earth with, uh, with your message? Yes, definitely. What I really enjoy it, and I do rejoice in the Lord is, is preaching the gospel. That is what I was chosen for and called to do, and that is the greatest thrill of my life, is preaching the gospel, because it was the preaching of the gospel that brought me freedom in Christ. Oh, yes. Yes. You came into uh, pure New Testament Christianity, and um, I believe that you've come to the conclusion. You know, when we look in the book of Revelation last uh, week, we we spoke of the 12th chapter, the woman who was clothed with the sun and the moon under her, under her feet, and uh, uh, upon her head a crown of 12 stars, of course. This, no doubt, stands for the, the church that Jesus Christ established in the world, and uh, the woman being the bride, in a sense, the, yes, the, even the, the so womanly the, element of, of, of the brotherhood of God on yes, earth. Yes, even so, uh, parallel to this, uh, I learned differently, you see, as a Jesuit priest, I learned that that was the Virgin Mary, the Queen of Heaven. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, it, it, <laughs> and of course, I guess they wanted you to believe that, yes. because, because it says here that she had to flee, the dragon got after her, and she fled into the wilderness. Yes. And there she was, you know, for an awfully long dark age period, yes. wouldn't you think? Uh, yes. Where she was suppressed and hidden and, mm -hmm. and lost. Uh, yes. And that's why you had a hard time finding her, I believe. Yes. The church has been suppressed. Uh, I will say this, that under the Roman Catholic political power, because I, I discovered not only intellectually, as I found myself throughout my studies as a Jesuit priest, that the Catholic institution is not even a religion, much less a Christian church. Um, uh, Catholicism mm -hmm. is a political power under the cover of religion. Yeah. That is what it is. It's, uh, I found that later, not only through my own personal experience within the Jesuit order, but then when I came to the scripture, the Holy Spirit called me to identify these realities that I already went through with God's written revelation. And I see it in prophecy, all the way from the prophet Daniel to the book of Revelation. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. God knew it would happen. Yes. It was a terrible thing. Yes. But he had to warn his people, didn't he? Definitely. Uh, and, and no wonder when John comes down here to this, this dragon who raped the church, or the church climbed on the beast and, and rode beast back, didn't she? Yes. She, she actually catered to his demands, mm -hmm. joined in with the political power, mm -hmm. and, and then John says that he, uh, he was amazed yes. that she became, rather than a virgin woman, that is a beautiful woman, mm -hmm. a radiant woman, she became a Babylonian uh, harlot. That, that is what uh, a Revelation chapter 17 right. describes in such a prophetical description. I was convicted of a Holy Spirit on the difference between Catholic religion and the Christian church. Yeah. That is where I discover that it is impossible for Roman Catholicism to be a Christian church once that she already, from the beginning, he mm -hmm. became uh, conceived as a harlot, as a prostitute, yes. not as a virgin. Right. Yes. The difficulty would arise in the fact that you only have 30 years of the history of the Christian church that is reliable, yes. the New Testament. Yes. Whereas you have now 1,260 or 1,700 or 800 years of the Roman harlot. Yes. So the people of the world have really been deceived. It's been deceived for many centuries, and of course, this deceit has been taking place on their uh, as I mentioned in the first segment of this, uh, your program, uh, I will say that under the delusion that uh, Roman Catholicism has created in the minds of people as a drunkenness, the, the angel prophesies yeah. uh, that she had made drunk the inhabitants of the earth. Under such a drunkenness, people has fallen into such a great delusion of uh, seeing uh, Roman Catholicism as Christianity and making almost the same thing while it's not. 
while well, like Christianity is one thing and Catholic religion is another thing mm. quite different. If you want to read the history of Christianity, you would have to read the book of Acts yes. and the epistles written by the holy apostles. Yes, that is, is how I was convicted throughout the process of my conversion right. and seeing this difference. All the way from the book of Acts to the book of Revelation, we see a different church altogether. Yes. Well, then would you agree that the first denomination was not the Lutheran denomination? In reality, it was the Catholic denomination because it broke off Yes. From the true original church of Jesus Christ or yes. the Christian faith. Yes. Would you agree with that? Well, um, I will say this much. I will say that uh, going from the scripture point of view, uh, biblical revelation, I'll see that Roman Catholicism has been conceived very early, not in these last stages. I can see that the conception of Catholicism will go all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Yeah. In the Garden of Eden already, uh, Satan used two principles that are the two pedestal of the Roman Catholic system today yeah. in the 20th century. Yeah. And going back to the Garden of Eden, we see Satan using two principles that are the basic ingredients and elements of the whole Catholic system. One is he tried to pervert God's revelation. Right. He, he went and told Eve, God has told you not to eat from the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now, he invert the singular to plural. He yeah. took God's decree that was given in singular, God forbid not to eat from one tree, mm -hmm. from one tree, not yeah. of the trees. Yeah. Now, Satan diverted, yeah. Satan uh, uh, speculated about uh, as the woman saw this deceit and discovered this lie, he changed uh, and he went from the perversion of the scripture to create a tradition. Already as the beginning of religious tradition. Mm -hmm. He said, don't you see that if you partake of the fruit that God has forbidden you not to eat, the fruit of the good and evil, then you shall become as gods yourself. Right. You will like it, you will love it. Now, that was a very religious proposal, a very wonderful religious proposal. Yeah. Because who is the man that was not designed to go as high as God? Yeah. Every human would like to have a little bit of divinity, you know. Yeah. Now, that is what Roman Catholic tradition is all about, yeah. is the perversion of the gospel right. with the amalgamation of all the other pagans' religion throughout history. Right. That is where I see the gestation of Catholicism throughout the Old Testament mm -hmm. history. And then the birth, her birth, the birth with Constantine the Emperor. I will say that historically speaking and prophetically speaking, you will see that under the death of Constantine the Emperor already, the birth of Catholicism take place in 337. So you have then the Christian church is recorded in the New Testament and then the first falling away uh, under Constantine around that 300. Is, well, I will say that falling away uh, begin already in the first century. If yeah. we, we read John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, 19. The Gnostic. Well, then yeah. the, the Antichrist already were yeah. there already. Right. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit revealed that uh, there in the uh, coming and the manifestation of the Antichrist, already in plural, many Antichrists were taking place. Paul spoke to the Corinthians about false brethren. Yes. Uh, Paul spoke to the Ephesians uh, elders and told them in chapter 20 of the book of Acts um, that uh, to watch for the church, to watch for the doctrine, to watch for the written revelation because oh, yes. it will come a time when they will be infiltrated uh, the, from yeah. then themselves, among themselves, yeah. men yeah. will rise up against the written yeah. revelation, the doctrines of Jesus Christ. How yes, sad. How very sad. sad. Uh, very we, sad. Ha we have not been watching. Not While much. we've been sleeping, the enemy yes. has been sowing yes. tears inside the church. While yes. we've been sleeping, right? Yes. We're not studying our Bibles. We're not reading the Word of God. No. We, and you're, you're pre millennial. Not enough. You're futurist. Uh, take the book of Revelation out and divorce it yes. totally, totally from, from the, the reality. context in yes. which it was written yes. from John's day. Yes. Uh, you know, John, John combined the four beasts of Daniel. Daniel had the vision of the, the bear, the lion, That's correct. and the yes. leopard, then the, the, the 
terrible looking, yes. vicious yes. beast, which was Rome. Mm -hmm. But then John combines all four into yes. one. Yes. And then out of that, he shows this head yes. that was wounded. Yes. Now, Rome fell in 476, uh, yes. as far as a political Rome. After 800 yes. years, they, they, they fell. Yes. But out of the ruins of uh, that fall of political Rome yes. came forth papal Rome or religious Rome there is, there to is. carry on this beastology there is of the Daniel yes. all the way down to yes. the end of the world. That's correct. The head has yes. been wounded and is still being healed, isn't it? Yes. Uh, right it now, was healed in 476 and it is still being healed through, uh, yes. as you were mentioning earlier. I will say the greatest manifestation of healing of this head and the person of the Catholic system is coming as a result of the charismatic renewal and the ecumenical movement. Yeah. This is when, because even the papacy and the entire Roman Catholic institution falls so much in this grain, not only throughout the Protestant Reformation, to a point that even Charles V, an emperor, already abdicated the crown, abdicated the empire, and retired himself because he was put to shame on their Martin Luther messages. He said, how a heretic can speak to me, an emperor, about Christ and salvation yes. when the Pope himself has not even known this much. Yes. You see, yes. now he was put to shame. Charles An the emperor, fifth, yes, yes right. Charles V, mm -hmm. he went back to Spain. He said, I don't want. Uh, the intention is if he, Charles V, keep being an emperor, he will have to fight the Pope, uh -huh. politically and militarily. Yes. And he don't want to do that. Right. He preferred to abdicate right. because he was put to shame. Yeah. Now, that means that already uh, the Catholic system were falling in disgrace, very, very powerful from 476 down to the edges. It was falling, 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 falling. Yeah. Suddenly, uh, it came a time when the Jesuit order, this is where I believe the healing began, the Jesuit order in 1541, this is what I have in the four horsemen, uh, riding in the black horse, the general Jesuit, because it's prophetic that the establishment of the Jesuit order became the beginning of the healing of Roman Catholicism, because the papacy was about to collapse in the Middle Ages already, it was about to disappear under the Protestant Reformation. He had no support, not even from the kings, not even from the emperors, no support from people. And coming to the Second World War, to be very brief in conclusion, uh, we see that falling even stronger because Pius XII was engaged in such a conspiracy, not only against the church as a pope, not only against Christ as, as taking his place, but against the gospel and against civilization because he blessed the troops of Mussolini, yeah. he blessed the troops of Hitler, he blessed the troop of Franco. And then he proclaimed them to be ambassadors and protectors of the Catholic faith. Yeah. Now, Pius XII was about to be brought to Nuremberg trial as a criminal of war, and Americans protect him. There the was Americans a compromise. The Americans the that's Pope right. from being brought that to trial. Correct. Brought to trial for for war crimes that's against correct. civilization. Against civilization be, because of his support of the uh, Nazi regime and protection. Of the of Nazi the... troops and the Vatican, yeah. and the Vatican were one of the largest and most powerful Nazi divisions already. Yes. By the time that Eisenhower uh, already was to land in Italy, uh, the troops, the Allied forces were about to land. They were prevented from landing and getting into Italy because the Pope had one of the most strongest Nazi divisions protecting the Vatican. Is that right? Yes. And that Hitler actually felt that he was a, a prototype of uh, the Inquisition. That's correct. In exterminating the yes. Jews. Well, something similar is happening today in this process of healing of Roman Catholicism. As a result of that disgrace, of that falling, now they went about to appealing to the ecumenical movement and second to the charismatic movement. And that is the process of healing of Roman Catholicism, prophetically, mm -hmm. uh, that is what we see now. Uh, so uh, then you would uh, see the uh, political Rome being wounded yes. by, the, by the invasion of the uh, Talia the Han That's and correct. The Odiacer, yes. and then the healing of that through uh, papal Rome,
uh, and Jesuit then order. later on the Jesuit, the Jesuits coming the Jesuits and trying coming to heal it again. Up immediately. And uh, then mm. uh, we do know, however, that Rome will be entrenched so well in world affairs. Yes. The people will marvel when Christ slays her. Well, it's happening. When he destroys her. Yes, it's happened through theology of liberation, liberation theology that is called. Mm -hmm. It's happened that now, with communism, it's happened the same that happened with fascism. What happened is the, the Catholic system, being a political power under the cover of religion, is looking for a political power that sustains her that feed her. So, so Rome is her. turning to communism. In turn communism turning now. to communism yes. to, to sustain her. This is Because what the beast has got to have political assistance to survive. That is correct. She cannot convert people. No, absolutely. She has no spirit. No. So she has to have material. That's correct. And political assistance. Correct. To survive in the world. That's correct. Which she cannot get in America, but she can. She's trying to get it in Russia. Definite. And, and in America to the place that uh, the 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 uh, the Pope is meeting with. Uh, well, uh, American statesman to, to as a well point, as Gorbachev. Yes, to a point we will say this, that political, American political power is supporting right now a bit of the Catholic power. Uh, that means already that took place with President Ronald Reagan by the time that he appointed an ambassador to the Vatican. Yes, he appointed an that ambassador. That was a failure. Yeah. A big right. failure, <clears throat> now, a big a, betrayal to even to the American Constitution. It was a betrayal yeah, to the American betrayal. Constitution, yes. 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 Uh, I'm a, of course, I I, uh, I have a lot of affection for President Reagan. Yes. Uh, however, uh, one of the things that I that I w questioned was the involvement in in, uh, in Central America. Yes. Uh, I might ask you uh, how much involvement in Central America boils down to nothing but aid to the Roman Catholic uh, Church in, well, in in Latin America. What happened in Central America right now is very much related to what happened in Asia before, in Vietnam, Korea, all these uh, countries under uh, communism, and what is happening in Europe right now with the opening. Now, uh, what is happening is there is a type of reconciliation uh, through the coordination of the papacy through the coordination of the papacy. What is, that means, uh, Brother Daudet, is that we are living in the last stages in prophecy here. Mm -hmm. We are seeing now, as never we see before, we see the marks, the signs, of one world government and one church. Yes, we're seeing and that. And not the church of Christ, yes. the church of the Antichrist. It will be the Babylonian yes, church. Yes, the Babylonian church. And the, yes. the, the evangelical The preparation, or the, or the, people the who stage. Are Yes, Biblical Christians would have to go underground. That is correct. As they do in Brazil, Mexico. Yes. Uh, how many countries <clears throat> are tolerant, uh, or shall I say intolerant, that you have been in of the, of the gospel message? I will say this. Today you can hardly find uh, intolerance in the sense that was displayed in the Middle Ages. Uh, the, in, uh, the intolerance is still there, almost in every country, but more sophisticated. Today, we have a case where even in the United States, a priest, like a Clark Butterfield, converted to the gospel of Jesus Christ, it happened to read Alberto, the first part of my testimony, mm -hmm. he came to us, and after he joined this ministry, and he was saved, and he became a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, and he became part of the New Testament Church of Christ, once that happened, he was murdered. He was killed by the Jesuit in Detroit, Michigan. That was not in the Middle Ages. That happened now. Yeah. We offer even the documents here in the edition. In this edition of this book, they're under a court order in Detroit, Michigan. This yeah. book is illegal. It's being banned under a court order today. The court order of... In of United the, States. Of the United States, yes. yes. A, uh, a record of uh, a Clark Butterfield converted to the Christian faith from uh, from Rome, from uh, the priesthood, uh, and according to Dr. Rivera's testimony, uh, murdered, and you attribute it to the Jesuit to the Jesuit order. The Jesuit order through a medical doctor. This is what I call a more sophisticated intolerance. Right. When I, they wants to kill a person, not only to persecute but even kill, they can do so by sophisticated means, because even scientific means. Yes. To so many. Yes. This is just so a many avenues to uh, to hurt people. Yes. This is a very dramatic medically. Right. Medically, that is correct. The documents to prove this are there in the book, and this is why the court ordered not to publish no longer these documents. 
Uh, we go back to uh, Father Chiniqui. Yes, a wonderful man of God. Here he is, 50 years in the Church of Rome, right. and, and then 40 years in the Church of Christ. Right. The sequel of this yes. is a tremendous, powerful revelation yes. of what Catholicism is all about, especially in the conspiracy that played in the United States yes. throughout the history of the United States. I am greatly impressed with, uh, with uh, Chinakui because he had so much love. Yes. Tears. Powerful. Uh, Powerful. Emotionally, yes. in, in love with, yes. with, uh, with Catholics, yes. to, he, would, he would give his life for them. Yes. Uh, Abraham Lincoln loved uh, uh, Chinakui, yes. isn't he? Yes. Uh, he, uh, he defended him, I believe, in a, in a trial. In a trial against his bishop, yes, his bishop. His bishop, as uh, most Catholic bishops, they went against him there, uh, uh, because they want to stop him from proclaiming the gospel right. and uncovering all the, all the corruption of Catholicism. As a matter of fact, he uh, told President Lincoln that the Jesuits were to kill him before he was killed by the Jesuits. Chinique was the only person that came to President Abraham Lincoln to warn him against the Jesuits. Yes. Yes, before he was murdered. The, uh, the assassination of Lincoln was announced uh, was it 48 hours yes. in Minneapolis, Minnesota, prior to the assassination in the Roman Church? That's correct. They knew that he would be assassinated. Yes. And that the Booth, clergy already knew, yes. The clergy already knew. That's correct. And that Booth yes. was actually a henchman yes. working An for the Roman of the Church. Jesuit. Yes, of the Jesuit order, yes. And this is documented in Washington. It is documented in the Vatican, too. <laughs> in the Vatican. Yes. Uh, that yeah, is where... I read the, the, the files. The files are yes. in the Vatican. Yes. Uh, but I understand that, that Chinakui wanted to put the blame where it belonged, just, oh, as, the, just as the, the uh, Adolf Hitler yes. and, the, and, the, and the Vatican worked together. Yes. He wanted to put the blame where that Booth was actually working for the Vatican. That's right. But they were afraid that after the... Uh, the Civil War scars were so serious that yes. they didn't want to cause a... A conflict, a, a an conflict, international conflict. That an international stated. conflict yes. between the Catholic and Protestant. Yes, that is correct, yes. This, uh, actually, uh, the memories of these things bring to me, to my own experience in my own country, Spain. We have a civil war that was fomented by the Vatican in 1931. Yes. Under the pretext of communism. Today you have a socialist government mm. that is depriving people from the gospel as the Catholics did before for so many centuries. Mm. They have deprived my entire country from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Depriving Catholics from salvation, depriving Catholics from eternal security. Why did the Roman Church have such disdain for Abraham Lincoln? They did because Lincoln was a good reading of the Holy Scripture, a good student. He was searching the scripture, and I remember that Jesus said, search the scripture, and he not only said that, but uh, he seems to have eternal life, and they are the ones that give testimony of yes. myself. Right. Uh, even Jesus said that uh, through the scripture we found life. Uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln was already, being a politician, more distinctive than any other person than they fear that Abraham Lincoln will enforce, more than no other president, will enforce the reading of the scripture. Reading of the scripture. That's correct. And that, what, that is what very fearful. That, in exposing Babylon, yes. you actually shed light on the yes. word of God and on the, the church yes. of the Bible. Yes. And he knew the difference between Christianity yes. and Roman Catholicism. He knew the difference, right, which many politicians do not don't know, know, especially no. in the Middle East. Absolutely. They don't know that uh, Romanism yeah. is not Christianity. Absolutely. And that's why people hate Christianity. Yes. They think Christianity is Babylon. As Babylon. Romanism. Exactly. And they hate Christianity. The Muslims, they do that. As I... The Muslims, I, yes. Yes. I wrote the sixth part of my testimony there. The prophet is called uh, the prophet. And the prophet, yeah. I reveal how the Muslim religion was established by the Augustinian monks uh, uh -huh. as early as that already. Right. With the purpose to... Uh, discredited Christianity, evangelical Christianity, biblical Christianity, New Testament uh, Christianity, and then to uh, destroy the Jewish population. Yes. That is. yes. Well, we're going to get into that next week. Uh, we will. And, uh, beloved, we believe in freedom. Man. A man can believe whatever he wants. God gives him that freedom. 
he can eat of the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. Now, God said, don't do it, but, he, but the man had a will to do it, and he was allowed to do it. Even though God forbid it, God allowed him to do it. And the same thing is true. We love all people. And we would die, I would die, Dr. Rivera would die for the right that people have to believe anything they want to believe, whether a truth or a lie. But we feel that we need to have a fair interchange, a fair understanding of truth so that people will have a chance to be able to discriminate between what is lie and what is true, what yes. is false, what is erroneous. We would die for the right for people to disagree with us. Yes. And uh, Dr. Rivera agrees with that. But we thank God we have the opportunity in, in America yes. to still express the freedom of truth that you can take it or leave it, you can eat of it, or you can refuse it. Come back next week. Preaching the Word is preaching the truth. And we'll be here as always.